It started with small oddities around my apartment. Misplaced items, curtains ask you when I knew I'd left them closed. My cat seemed wary of some unseen presence. I chalked it up to forgetfulness in my busy schedule. But soon the bizarre events escalated. Coming home one day, I noticed my front doormat flipped upside down. That nagging unease returned, I'm certain I'd left it right side up. By now the pattern was impossible to ignore. Someone had been in my apartment while I was out. Multiple times. But nothing seemed stolen. Maybe just kids messing around, I tried convincing myself. I decided to install a home security camera system so I could monitor inside when I was away. It provided some comfort seeing my living room stay empty and undisturbed throughout the days. My imagination must be getting carried away. Until I caught the first incident on tape. Returning home one evening, I thought I glimpsed movement on the monitor as I entered. I rewound the footage, sure enough, a dark figure darted across the room minutes before I arrived. But it happened so quick, I couldn't quite make out who it was. Just a fleeting shadow, gone in a flash. I scoured the rest of the day's recording but found nothing else unusual. Over the next week, the brief intrusions multiplied. A figure pacing by a window while glancing around. A blurry shape rifling through my files. Each time, the camera only captured them for a split second before they vanished again. But it was definitely a human trespasser, not my imagination. The thought of someone repeatedly sneaking in and out of my home fueled my nightmares. What did they want from me? Why not steal anything? The violation felt personal, targeted. Like I was being toyed with. I updated my system to send motion alerts straight to my phone when the cameras detected activity. Soon, alerts buzzed in daily, always when I was out, front door opened. Movement in hallway. Short video clips accompanied the texts, but revealed only fleeting shadows. Not enough to identify the intruder. One sweltering July afternoon as I left work, the alert tone sounded, movement in living room. This time, the camera caught the figure exiting through the front door in a hurry, apparently startled by my arriving home early. From the footage, I could make out a tall, thin male frame and long black coat. But his face was covered with some sort of grinning demon mask. Glimpsing it even in the video chilled my blood. This was no harmless prankster. I installed more cameras with expanded coverage, whoever this was. They were bold enough to keep invading my home despite the risk of getting caught. I became consumed with gathering evidence each day, determined to finally reveal the stalker's identity and put an end to this nightmare. It all culminated one Tuesday evening. Returning from the gym, I entered my apartment only to find the front door mysteriously unlocked. My pulse quickened, another unwanted visitor. I flipped open my phone as I walked inside. Living room camera recording now, I said clearly. Let's see who's here to harass me this time. That's when a floorboard creaked behind me. Spinning around, I came face to face with the masked intruder himself towering over me. Before I could react, a damp cloth covered my face. Then darkness. I awoke who knows how much later, vision blurred, head throbbing. As my surroundings came into focus, I realized I was still in my living room, slumped on the floor and tightly bound with rope. Duct tape sealed my mouth. Faint euphoric music played as the intruder danced around the room, pulling books from shelves, helping himself to food from my fridge. 
He seemed completely unconcerned at having taken me hostage. My stomach dropped as the masked man glided over, staring down with visible excitement. In a muffled sing-song voice he taunted, I've been watching you, hiding in here, learning all about you before we finally met. He leaned in close, fetid breath fogging the mask. You shouldn't have come home early and spoiled my fun. He lunged suddenly, grasping my throat with his gloved hands. Just as my vision darkened, he released me, giggling. This psycho was enjoying tormenting me. As he returned to rummaging through my belongings, I realized my best hope was the cameras. Police would review the footage once my body was found. This monster's identity would be uncovered. Justice would come, even if too late for me. I just had to keep him here as long as possible. Buying time for the camera uploads. Mustering my strength, I wriggled loudly on the floor, drawing his attention. He sauntered back over. I made desperate muffled cries, as if begging for mercy. His chest heaved with excitement at my panic. What's that? He whispered gleefully, leaning down and peeling the tape slowly from my lips. I gasped loudly as if relieved. Why are you doing this to me? I pleaded hoarsely. We're on camera. You won't get away with it. He glanced up amused before turning back to me. Oh, I know about your silly cameras. But it doesn't matter. No one will see what happens here tonight. He drew a gleaming knife from his coat. And you brought this on yourself with your little home surveillance hobby. My blood turned to ice as he trailed the blade along my face. So no help was coming. This was it. I squeezed my eyes shut and sent a silent prayer as his grip tightened. Suddenly, my phone began buzzing wildly from the coffee table. His head jerked up. In that split second, my leg lashed out, connecting with his wrist. The knife dropped from his grasp. Howling in rage, he grabbed my throat, bashing my head brutally on the floor. Gasping what little air I could, I groped blindly until my fingers found the fallen blade. With my fading strength, I drove it deep into the maniac's calf. He shrieked in pain, releasing me to clutch the knife jutting from his leg. I squirmed back like a worm as he collapsed to one knee. Peeling the sticky duct tape from my ankles, I staggered upright. Swaying in agony and shock, I loped for the front door. Behind me, the man bellowed furiously, trying to give pursuit. As I reached the exit, he hurled the bloodied knife, narrowly missing my head. I crashed through the doorway just as sirens wailed nearby. He wouldn't risk coming after me now. Stumbling down the apartment steps, I barely made it to the sidewalk before collapsing as a policeman ran over. The last thing I saw was his mouth moving urgently above me before I blacked out. I awoke days later in the hospital, battered but alive. The intruder had fled by the time backup arrived, but the cameras and DNA from his leg wound would help identify and convict him. He wouldn't terrorize me or anyone else again. I sagged back, finally at peace knowing the nightmare was over. My plan had succeeded, the hidden lenses had captured the whole horrific encounter. I was proud that even bound and assaulted, I'd managed to set the trap on my tormentor. The road to recovery would be long, both mentally and physically. But justice had been served. The police would pore over the footage, analyzing it for clues until they caught the masked psychopath. At least, that was my hope until the detective arrived with unsettling news. None of my cameras had recorded any trace of the attack. 
The data files were completely blank that evening, probably deleted somehow. My mind reeled. Had it all been some vivid trauma-induced hallucination? But my wounds were real enough. And I knew for certain that I had caught my killer on camera. The intruder himself had practically admitted to sabotaging the recordings ahead of time, knowing how damning the footage would be. Meaning he was still free, escaping once again into the shadows. Out there waiting for his next opportunity to terrorize. He had outsmarted my surveillance along with the police, deleting the evidence that could identify him before it saved to the cloud. Beyond physical traces, I had nothing. No one would believe he was real. The violation I feel knowing my mask stalker remains unidentified and preparing his next move is indescribable. He meticulously planned each step, choreographing every sick detail. And I was his flawed, helpless understudy, clinging to false hope the cameras offered. So please, learn from my grim experience. However comprehensive your home security seems, it only takes one overlooked blind spot for darkness to creep in. And footage means nothing if the malevolence you've recorded eludes the lenses once again. I'm just grateful to be alive. But the thought of his demonic mask appearing on my monitors once more chills me to the core. So for now, the cameras stay switched off. Some threats are too twisted for constructs of metal and digital data to comprehend, let alone capture. The man who brazenly took control of my home and life slips silently back into the void. For now. But one day, when I least expect it, I'm certain those grotesque hollow eyes will stare back through my lens. And this time, no alarms will save me from his performance. The cameras may roll, but I will not survive the final cut. The credits on this grim tale are still waiting to scroll. And my one hope is that no one else is forced to witness the killer sequel he has plotted. A horror show with an ending unfit for any screen.